God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Thank you for joining us for our online worship for the Duke Center and Rue United Methodist Churches. I'm Pastor Beth Rossler and today I'm recording in front of one of the stained glass windows at the Rue United Methodist Church. As we begin, I just wanted to offer to anyone who would like uh, me to bring you communion, please let me know. And I'll be glad that uh, as we extend the table on those first Sundays of the month to be able to come and share with you at your home. Also, we'll have a new Bible study beginning soon. Uh, watch for details as there'll be both a daytime option and an evening option. We're beginning to wrap up uh, our study on when we pray like Jesus, and we only have another week or two to go. As we begin, I wanted to share a thought from a TikTok video. I know a strange place to be able to find uh, a sermon illustration, but I wanted to start with what I had found. Uh, baby Carter uh, was being videoed by his parents, and he was being offered some favorite toys versus some random everyday items found from around the house. Now, baby Carter is offered his favorite squishy book, and then he's offered a piece of paper. You wanna take a guess which one baby Carter picked? Carter picked the piece of paper. Then he's offered one of his favorite light up toys versus the TV remote. Guess which one he chose? Well, you already know all kids pick the TV remote, but they did this uh, several times and each time over a favorite, loved, well played with toy, uh, little baby Carter picked a random item from around the house. He even picked a random item over his favorite pacifier. And I began to think about it. He was so cute, but I think there was a lesson behind it. You see, we always think that the fence or that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. And apparently baby Carter did too. The grass is always greener on the other side of the fence is really about the fact that there's things that a person doesn't have that always seem more appealing than the things that he or she does have. So baby Carter was used to those favorite toys. They were kind of the old thing. But what he was being offered uh, in pieces of paper, remotes, and, and other things from around the house was something that he didn't normally have. And so the grass was always greener, and so he was going to pick those new and different things, those things that seemed more intriguing. You know, we see a lot of kids who are really excited about the next new gaming system, or teenagers and adults who are excited about the next new phone. In fact, they'll wait for hours and stand in line to be able to get the newest thing right when it comes out. And that's because advertisers and companies are counting on the fact that we want what's greener on the other side of the fence or at least what we think is. So we want the newest and the fastest, the best, but what we seem to forget is that oftentimes what we do have, what's already familiar, is already a green place. It's already a green pasture. In Psalm 23, we're told that the shepherd will make us lie down in green pastures. You know, it's the shepherd who's in charge of defining and finding us what those green pastures look like. If the shepherd leads us to this place, we don't have to go look over there. We can just be where the shepherd has led us. And if we look at the pasture that we're already in, it's already plenty green. It has all the things that we need. It might not be the newest and latest things, but it has, uh, but it is green and it is and does have all that we need. So don't get too caught up in, in thinking about what everybody else has or whatever the newest and best is. Be reminded that the pastures that we're in right now can also be seen as pretty green. We're still looking at Psalm 23, and so here are the words in this Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the, the right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Uh, now, I know that many of you grew up in a time when KJV was the dominant version of Scripture. And so if you memorized Psalm 23 a long time ago, you probably memorized it in the KJV. Well, I grew up in a time when there were lots of different versions of Scripture coming out, lots of different translations. And so I apologize in advance if I sometimes uh, kind of mix and match some of those versions and translations into my own uh, compiled Psalm 23. Maybe it's kind of the new Beth translation, but um, there are lots of different versions and, and different ways to be able to say these phrases. And so I apologize if, I'm, if I don't use the one that you're used to. But last week we began to look at Psalm 23, perhaps the most familiar passage in all of scripture. But some, sometimes when something is so familiar, we can kind of miss things, uh, miss the depth and all that scripture has to offer. Uh, I pulled one of the resources I had on my shelf back, back off and was looking at it uh, in preparation for, re for looking at this psalm. Uh, the book is called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23 by Philip Keller. It's not a new book. In fact, actually, it's a bit older book. But it has a lot of insights into what a shepherd, someone who actually was a shepherd, thinks about this psalm and the applications that they found. So uh, throughout the next couple of weeks, I'll probably be sharing some of the insights that, that Keller uses in his books along with my own thoughts. But I wanted to share that resource with you if anybody wanted to go look and find it. Um, last week for Psalm 23, we looked at the opening phrase, the Lord is my shepherd. We proclaim that we depend on the Lord for all things and that we choose to be a part of his flock. And if we look at that beginning phrase, really everything else that comes after it flows from that proclamation that we choose the Lord uh, as the shepherd of our lives. And so the next verse I want to look at is, I shall not be in want. Our family are pretty avid shoppers on Amazon. No, please don't judge. Uh, we often spend some time browsing through Amazon uh, and add items that we might want to our shopping cart. So last night I took a real quick look and my shopping cart had 18 items, but we also had 578 items saved for later. Plus each of us in our family has a wish list. What I wish this passage meant was that every item in my Amazon wish list, cart and even my save for later could magically be mine. I mean, if those are the things that I want, then why can't I have them? Well, we know that that's not really what the scripture is telling us. Uh, David, when he wrote this, was writing as someone who had been a shepherd. Uh, and I certainly don't think that David had every uh, material or physical want provided for him as a shepherd. He was part of a big family and, and was spending his time out in the fields with the sheep. So I don't really think that's what David is referring to uh, when he says we shall not want. And nowhere in the Bible does uh, God promise that there would be prosperity and riches for everyone. In fact, Jesus tells the rich young ruler that he should go and sell everything that he has and give it to the poor before he goes to follow Jesus. So we know that more stuff is, isn't the answer to not being in want. And even the richest men and women would tell you that they crave more than money in their bank account. So wants and material things aren't the answer. So what does David mean? Well, the New Living Translation says, I have all that I need. Now, of course, there's a big difference between needs and wants. But what the shepherd provides the sheep is what they need. And the rest of the psalm assures us that their needs, their food, their water, protection, correction, uh, are all being met. And so they can be content in a good shepherd's care. In John chapter 10, we read that Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So a good shepherd will give all that they have to provide and care for the sheep. And a shepherd loves his flock so much that he would sacrifice his own life for them. So with a love like that, 
with a love that loves so much that it would give up its own life, we can trust that we can be utterly content in Jesus' care for us, knowing it's the best care that we can get, but also being assured that Jesus will meet our needs. The next phrase in Psalm 23 is, He makes me lie down in green pastures. Uh, this is where the book A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23 was helpful because Philip Keller, uh, the previous shepherd, wrote in his book that sheep will not lie down unless there's four conditions that are met. The sheep need to be free from fear, free from tension, aggravation, and hunger. And the shepherd is responsible for managing the conditions for the sheep so that they can find the rest that they need, so that those four things that they need are met. Otherwise, uh, a flock that's restless, discontented, always agitated and disturbed doesn't do well. And then the same is true for people. Sheep are actually very timid creatures. They can actually be easily spooked. And so even a stray rabbit that jumps out of the brush can cause an entire flock of sheep to stampede. You see, a sheep's only real defense is to be able to run away. And so as long as there's even a suspicion of danger, a sheep won't lay down because then it can't get up and run away fast enough. It feels defenseless. So how do you keep a sheep from being afraid? The presence of the shepherd will calm the sheep and allow them to be free from fear enough to be able to rest. In our lives, we live lives with a lot of uncertainty. Uh, we never know what could be around the next corner. But we can be assured that our shepherd is nearby. There's nothing like, the, like Christ's presence to assure us that we can face the unknown. Because Christ's presence brings peace that can allow us to rest as well. The presence of the shepherd also serves to allay the sheep's worries about any tensions between other sheep. Uh, you see sometimes some of the um, more dominant and older sheep would bully the younger and weaker sheep. And so the only way to prevent that was to be aware of what was going on with the sheep, but also to be able to come and be with the sheep. Because if uh, the shepherd arrived, it would take their focus off of each other and allow them to focus just on the shepherd. Sounds like a good plan for us as well. And then the sheep had another... Uh, Another thing that they needed to have, they needed to be free from being aggravated by pests like ticks and flies. Um, and so when they were aggravi aggravated by those sorts of things, then they would be on their feet stamping and shaking their heads looking for relief. Uh, I know some of you have four-legged creatures like we do at our house. And I can tell you that as soon as one of our pets gets fleas, everybody notices. We have one dog that we nicknamed Moaning Myrtle because, well, she likes to whine and to moan. And so you know something is wrong. And then accompanied by the itching, we know that it's time to replace their flea collars. And if you can think about how quickly a few fleas can make their lives miserable, uh, the same is true for sheep. Uh, and, and the solution is the same for sheep as it is for, for our four-legged critters at home. They just need some medication and some prevention in order to keep them healthy and happy. You know, humans too get bugged pretty easily. Something can get underneath our skin and drive us nuts as well. So what's the solution for us? We're not putting on flea, co flea collars, I know. But we can put on the presence of the Holy Spirit. We can ask God to be able to help us. We have a peace that passes all understanding available to us, and we can be restored and refreshed by the Spirit flowing through us. And so that can help us to stay healthy and happy and restore our souls, even when things bug us. And then lastly, sheep won't lie down if they're hungry. So, of course, the shepherd provides good pastures for them. The psalm says that he makes us to lay down in green pastures. And, of course, we assume that so that the sheep can eat. Uh, but most sheep live in places that don't naturally come with lush green meadows. Sheep are often raised in those dry, arid uh, uh, locations. And so a shepherd must also carefully prepare the places where the sheep is going to graze. It's part of the shepherd's job as well. They clear and they plow, they cultivate, they water and irrigate and take care of places so that the sheep will have a green pasture full of good food to be able to eat. 
just like the sheep, the environment that we put ourselves in uh, will determine how well we grow. God works very hard to be able to lead us to places that will nourish us and encourage us to thrive. God is working on our behalf in order to provide all that we need to feel secure, provided for, and free to find a rest in Him. He makes those green pastures for us to lie down in, and His presence allows us to focus on Him despite the other distractions in life. Our Good Shepherd leads us to places that we can find rest. The last phrase that I want to look at is, He leads me besides quiet waters. Now, the shepherd knows where the still, quiet, deep, clean, and pure water is to be found so that he can lead his sheep to it. It's water that will satisfy and refresh the sheep in the hot climates where many of them live. Uh, And if sheep aren't led to the clean water, they're going to find all the places that they shouldn't go. And they'll drink from muddy puddles and stagnant pools, which can contain harmful bacteria. And of course, that choice has consequences where they won't be as healthy. We, too, need to be led to the places that refresh and satisfy us. We need to be led away from the distractions and offers of things that don't really satisfy. And God knows how we are most tempted and distracted, and so he tries to lead us away from those things. He knows that the human heart and soul, with its amazing capacity for God, can never be satisfied with a substitute. And a lot of those distractions are substitutes for the real thing. Blaise Pascal, uh, the old theologian, uh, is often quoted as saying this, that there's a God-shaped hole in the heart of every man which cannot be satisfied uh, by any created thing, but only by God the Creator made known through Jesus Christ. We're always free to choose, but we want to find the real thing that fills and satisfies our souls, that fills that hole that, um, that was made to be filled by God. When we're led by the shepherd, we trust that he will lead us not just to quiet, still waters, but to the living water that really and truly refreshes our souls. When we allow the shepherd to be able to lead us, when we say that the Lord is my shepherd and we allow him to lead us to, uh, into the places that he wants us to, he makes a way for us to find contentment, even when it's not about stuff. To find real contentment in being, having our needs met. He allows us to find rest. And he refreshes our souls. There are so very many things that can lead us away from the shepherd's path. But it's important to continue to listen for the voice of the shepherd. And to be able to follow. So we find our green pastures and our quiet waters. Lord, I pray that this week we would find our rest in you, that the things that keep us awake and anxious and worried would be taken care of because of your presence. Lord, I ask that you lead us and guide us to the places where we can best grow and help us to find that refreshing that we need. In Jesus' name, amen. May your week be filled with the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.